I was off duty one day in this bar in Washington Heights. Where cops didn't have to pay for their drinks. And a couple of guys came in to rob the place. I chased them into the street, shot two dead. Put a third one in the leg. Why aren't you a cop no more? You see, one shot, well, the bullet took a bad hop. Private detective. Unlicensed. I do favors for people. In return, they give me gifts. So, what can I do for you? Someone's kidnapped my wife. I pay them, but they killed her anyway. I want you to find the men who did this and bring them to me. Whoever it was took your wife. Didn't just pick your name out of a hat. I've been following her. I know your schedule. I've done this before. I'm not gonna do it again. I understand we have a new player in the game. In my eyes, indisposed, in disguises, no one knows. Hides the face. I never laid a hand on her. The other two, they're the ones you better worry about. I call son, won't you come? And wash away They will obsess These guys are monsters. They're not human. How can I find them? People are afraid of all the wrong things. Once you're in the van, they're just body parts. You've dealt with situations like this? Not like this. I call son, won't you go? Where the heck did this come from? Where the heck did Dan Stevens' accent come from? This is quite unexpected across the board, but I must say, it's a pleasant surprise. This movie looks phenomenal to me, and it looks like it can compete against television. Now, of course, this is exactly the kind of movie that television is making extinct. The quality, hour-long cable dramas that we also love are, you know, one of the unfortunate side effects is that it's making Hollywood not really be able to make these small, low-budget uh, thrillers because, they, you know, they just can't compete. Uh, but I think this has a real shot at being able to do well on the big screen for several reasons. And I hope that it does because, for instance, I watched Terms of Endearment last night and I'd never seen it. It slipped through the cracks and I just absolutely adored it. And it reminded me that we don't really get to see really great acting anymore on the big screen. That's kind of also like really strong writing. Both of those uh, qualities have retreated to the small screen. And, you know, the big screen is all about, you know, big special effects uh, extravaganzas and high concept movies. And while I enjoy those, I do miss letting a movie breathe. Uh, and I see a film like this and I'm like, well, maybe we can, you know, get it back. So why do, so why do I think that this is competitive? Because so far, uh, good, just good acting and letting a movie breathe hasn't, you know, been enough to get people into the theater. So why can a walk among the tombstones maybe succeed? Well, first of all, it has Liam Neeson front and center, and I think in a role that is both familiar and new. Uh, this is enough like Taken, you know, it's the thing we like seeing Liam Neeson do. You don't mess with Liam Neeson. If there's ever an off-the-books private detective that you would want to hire, it would be Liam Neeson. Uh, but yet, you know, it has some new elements too. Uh, for instance, I like 1970s Liam Neeson here. I think the facial hair was a nice touch. Uh, I really buy it as a different time period for the character and also when he was a different person uh, and that much has happened since then. So I really liked those those sequences just in the trailer alone. So that's all very exciting. So again, old Liam Neeson, but with something new. Then of course you have Dan Stevens. They're the only real actors showcased here. Uh, and Dan Stevens looks really good. Uh, you know, I think that accent, I didn't even know it was him until they cut into the close-up because it was just so out of left field. Uh, and he did a great job. I guess he's another British actor who is a master of accents. So I thought that was great. It wasn't too over the top. It was just good enough to fit into the movie, which I thought was great. So those are your really only two actors shown here, uh, which is interesting. You know, we complain all the time about trailers showing too much of the movie, uh, and they show very little here, just enough to show you that Liam Neeson is in genuine 
danger. Uh, and I think it's a great choice that they have, they don't really show the killers at all, because I think it makes them just seem all the more ominous and scary and threatening. Uh, you don't know your enemy. So that's great. And speaking of not knowing your enemy, I think this looks like it could be a genuinely good thriller, a good mystery, where we have to figure it out as well with Liam Neeson as the movie goes along. And those are some of the best movie experiences. Uh, and it reminds me in a way of The Killing uh, on AMC uh, when it was good, and then also True Detective. And it's taking those kind of elements uh, you know, what part of the thing that's drawing people to the small screen, these great taut mysteries, and showing that the big screen can still do them. Which is great, because when you think of this movie on paper, Liam Neeson, A Walk Among the Tombstones, it's a New York thriller, blue collar thriller, you think to yourself, oh, it's just like another Mark Wahlberg movie. You know, the small ones that he makes that don't do that well, like We Own the Night and stuff like that. And those films were never able to succeed on the small screen. That's one of the reasons I think television was able to jump in there. There was an opening, a lack of quality, and it looks like maybe a movie like this could bring it back and show that, you know, sometimes a really great thriller, you know, movies can still do it. Uh, and also I thought this looked very cinematic. Really great uh, choices uh, and the great editing. I mean, maybe it's all just in the trailer, but I just really liked what I was seeing. Now, still, I guess, you know, as I describe these things, uh, television has become quite cinematic. Both The Killing and True Detective are very cinematic shows. Uh, and so you have to wonder, can a movie like this compete? I think that maybe it can. It looks very good to me, and it looks like the kind of movies that I miss, uh, and not, uh, not only in terms of acting, but being good mysteries, and just really well made. But the question is, is it enough to get you into the theater? Is Liam Neeson enough? Um, I'm curious. So please write your thoughts down below. Do you think this is something you would see in theaters? Does it look as good to you as it does to me? Uh, and do you think there's any hope of movies maybe luring people back for these smaller films? Or would you be content to watch this on television when it comes out on demand and just uh, bide your time watching shows like Fargo uh, and, you know, maybe The Killing or True Detective if you've missed it? All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review. Uh, I hope you write down below again what you think and you can check out some more episodes right now.